So is Docker similar to Homebrew? It seems like a package manager of some sort. Is that a is that a fair analogy? I mean, kind of. So what what and this is definitely a a a, a rat hole here, but that's yeah, fine. We, that. No, no, don't <laughs> apologize. This is a good one. So I, I'm thinking Docker. The the thing that is this is interesting that you asked that question because if someone if you had simply asked me what is Docker. I would say it's like installing very minimal bare bones, virtual machines to do huh? one specific thing. And that is true, right? Like you could, if you wanted to set up, a, you know, a, a virtual machine manager, like parallels or VMware or, or, or any, there's free ones out there, right? You know, you want to set up one of those, you could, you put a Unix operating system inside of it then finally install whatever you, you want to have it run, right? Fine. Yeah. Okay. Like, like, let's say you wanted to set up an iPerf server, right? iPerf being the, the, the speed test thing you can do on your local network. So fine, you install, and this is way overkill what I'm describing here, but, yep. but bear with me. So, yep, you, you create a virtual machine, you install Ubuntu inside the virtual machine. Then finally, when you get all of that up and running, you know, an hour and a half later, you go through, maybe you install some package manager or something inside your virtual machine. And now you install iPerf. iPerf is maybe a, you know, 200K app. And you just spent three hours building a Linux machine that you now have to manage just to have iPerf running. This is overkill, but yeah. it is a way of doing it. People were doing this so that they could compartmentalize stuff. And that's how Docker was born. It was like, hey, wait, I need a very specifically configured Unix environment to run this one little server app, but I don't want anything else to talk to it. So I want it in a virtual machine. So you're sandboxing it. Yeah. You're sandboxing it. Yeah, okay. Docker is that environment. They are very compartmentalized, bare bones. Uh, usually, I think always, I could be wrong on that, but certainly anytime I've done it, Unix environments that are standalone and and sandboxed but not full featured they they are you know very clearly built to do a specific thing so it's interesting to me and that's why i always relate them to virtual machines because that's sort of the evolution of them but it was interesting to me that you saw a jump from homebrew to docker and that is perhaps the other side of what Docker is. Cause it's like, well, I need something that's more sandbox than using homebrew to in just install an app, but I don't right. want to have to like manage a virtual machine and Docker sits in the middle of that. So really it's, you could come either way at it. And I thought I knew the origins of Docker, but it's entirely possible. Somebody came from the look, I've been using, you know, red hat package manager, RPM, but I need more. What if we just scale up one level and, and create a thing like that? That could also have been Docker's evolution. Oh, interesting. I don't, okay. I don't know. I just knew that I needed to run a command and I couldn't, it was a Docker command in order yeah. to get the, uh, create yeah. the, the container that I needed, but okay. Yeah. yeah. No, it's, it's fa fascinating that you asked it that way that, um, okay. and I don't know the origins of Docker. I thought I did. And now you've made me question everything <laughs> I know about my life. No, but Speaking that's, what, holes. that's what we love <laughs> about this show. Yeah. Yeah. So that's, that, that's, um, yeah. it, it, interesting. Like, yeah. Docker sits yeah. between virtual full on virtual machines and like just commands that you're installing on your Mac or on right. your device.